it's Robo, and we're back with another episode of Robo Reviews. And on this episode, we're gonna take a look at Black Watch Optic Shields. Cause the only thing worse than getting hit in the naked face is getting hit in the naked optic. Check it out. So here you have it guys, the Black Watch Optic Shields I've been talking about. Uh, now this review is going to be pretty simple because we are just talking about lens protection for your optics. Now I've got this mounted in a T1 Repro. Uh, I believe it's an Element 1 but it's honestly been so long I can't really remember. Uh, and it's sitting on a 1 3rd co-witness LaRue style uh, Repro QD mount. Now as far as optic shields go, these are pretty average. But again, that's kind of all optic shields. You're not really looking for something that has special features. You're looking for something that works, and uh, the Blackwatch Optic Shields do that. Now I've tried a number of different lens protection solutions, being other optic shields, uh, kill flashes, and also things like Lexane shields in front of the optic itself. Now why I prefer a kill flash or built-in solution when it comes to optic shield, and that is just merely it keeps everything contained within the optic itself. I don't need extra room in front of the optic, etc., etc., etc. So. Um, this keeps it all contained within the optic and gives complete coverage regardless of the angle at which that optic is maybe shot at or hit by a BB. So what makes these Blackwatch optic shields pretty cool? Well, I think it's in the design and that is most kill flashes that you'll find do have a honeycomb design. Now the problem I have found across many different types is that either the honeycomb is actually cut into the material in the wrong direction which uh, I'll show you in a second, or the actual honeycomb or openings uh, uh, of the device itself are just too small. Uh, and I'm gonna show you a couple examples of that right now. Now, before I was using the Black Watch Optic Shields, I was using this uh, metallic honeycomb uh, kill flash that I had glued into the actual frame of the optic. Now, it worked pretty well, but as you can see, the honeycomb is actually pretty small compared to the honeycomb that you see on the Blackwatch optic shields. Now, this does have the right shape, and I'll explain that in a second, but again, having such small openings for the honeycomb itself means when you get to a low light, a low light uh, situation, you don't have as much light that actually transfers through the kill flash, through your optic, and to your eye. So in a low light situation, I found this this solution did not transfer enough light to my eye to make my optic still useful. So uh, while similar in shape and concept, the Blackwatch Optic Shield just wins out purely because it, it works in more situations. Now what do I mean by that shape? Well, let me show, show you that as well. Now this is a solution for an EOTech obviously, it's not for a, mic a T1 Micro. But if you, if you can notice, the holes in this are much smaller. And really, the reason for that is this. Now this is a flat piece of metal. And it actually has little honeycombs cut out just in that flat metal. Uh, there isn't a lot of depth going this way. It's just basically, literally, a flat piece of metal with shapes cut into it. And what that actually leads to is a lot of material dead space. There's a lot more material that blocks light than it does let it in. And you can actually see that difference. Now imagine there was no lighting behind these optics and this would actually become pretty black uh, under low light situation. So while it does a great job at stopping BBs as you can see there, it does a pretty terrible job at transferring light when there's low light to uh, come through. So when it comes to the actual design and shape of those openings, it's actually really important that they leave as much of the supportive material uh, as thin as possible and the openings as large as possible. Uh, we're talking about airsoft uh, ammo here, airsoft BBs. These things are not going to break through uh, a piece of, you know, a piece of polymer or even a small metal grate, uh, even if those openings are large. So in this case, you can still get the protection while getting better visuals through the optic in a low light situation by having bigger holes. Now obviously Black Watch does make a lot more variations than just the T1 micro version of this kill flash slash protector. I have one for an EOTech here. Now as you can see by direct comparison, 
the Black Watch Optic Shield, even for the same EOTech device, has bigger openings and therefore transfers more light through that object while still retaining the same, if not more, protective qualities uh, than the metallic one just due to thickness and shape of the honeycomb pattern itself. So what are all the optics that are supported by the Black Watch Optic Shield system? Uh, well, they actually have a version for um, SRS, multiple different aim points, specters and uh, ACOGs, uh, EOTEX, T1 micros and RMRs, just depends on what manufacturer you have. Uh, and if you have a manufacturer that isn't really maybe 100% supported, uh, Black Watch Optic Shields does suggest that uh, you will have to maybe modify uh, the shape as you can see what I've done here. I've actually cut out uh, around the outsides of this device to make it fit better. Um, now you might actually have to do that with any of your uh, optic shields for these optics and that actually does pertain to my EOTech one. I haven't yet fit this to my EOTech Repro which is uh, an XPS32 Repro. And how you do that is actually not by sanding. This polymer is very resistant to sanding. Uh, as uh, Black Watch does state. So what you actually do have to do is be really, really, really careful because uh, I'm not liable for you cutting off any digits and near, uh, neither is Black Watch optic shields, but uh, you do actually have to take an X-Acto knife or a carving knife, uh, something that'll let you shave down very carefully the edges until you get a perfect fit. Uh, so like a lot of things in Airsoft, yes, it does take a little bit of modification, but uh, I'm probably not the first one to tell you that that's what you gotta do in airsoft sometimes. So, you know, just be careful when you're using a knife, get a parent if you need to, uh, but you might have to fit these, but it's it's definitely well worth it. So what do these things cost? They cost $20 Canadian, uh, and they're only actually sold here in Canada right now. This is a small time operation. Black Watch Optic Shields is uh, run by a, an acquaintance of mine, Jason Medlin, who lives in Toronto, Ontario. And he actually sells these through his Facebook page as well as airsoftparts.ca. And as of right now, those are the, actually the only two places you can get them. But again, even if you're an American watching this, I really highly do recommend this as your solution because it's the best, it's the best mix of no extra equipment in front of your, your optic. So therefore, again, because it's self-contained, it's going to save your optic from multiple different angles, all of them actually. Uh, and the other thing too is because it's a polymer, it's highly resistant. And the openings, the design of that honeycomb is designed to allow the maximum amount of light through even in a low light situation, which again, if you've ever been to like a faded giant um, or CQB situations where the lighting is gonna change dynamically, uh, you're gonna actually want that as a huge feature, again, while still retaining all the protective qualities you want in a kill flash. Uh, so again, guys, I highly recommend you guys incorporating the Black Watch Optic Shield system. I will put the link to the Facebook page as well as the sales page at airsoftparts.ca uh, for you if you wanna order one of these. I highly recommend you check out Black Watch Optic Shields. I trust them entirely. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Robo Reviews. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, but I do promise I have a ton more reviews on the go as well. Now in terms of gameplay, I'm actually gonna be away on business for the next week. So gameplay is gonna be a little bit spotty, but never fear, I will be back and soon enough to uh, edit some new videos for you and drop those. Now speaking reviews, I've got a couple more of those to share with you as well very soon enough. I've done reviews for the PTS Enhanced Polymer Foregrip short version, as well as their new Enhanced Polymer Grip, the pistol grip for an AEG. And on top of that, I've also done a review for the brand new, not even released yet, version of the RWA Nighthawk Custom Covert Ops 1911 uh, CO2 pistol. That's one you're definitely gonna wanna check out. It'll be showcased at American Mill Sims Ironclad 2, but you'll get a first look at it here. So be on the lookout. Those reviews should be dropping while I'm away. So speaking of which, taking a quick second to thank my two awesome sponsors, being Enola Gay Smoke Grenades and Red Wolf Airsoft. Now, whether you know it or not, both of these companies actually provide me support in such ways that allow me to do more airsoft stuff more importantly, bring you guys more gameplay and more reviews just like these to enjoy. Without their help, I wouldn't be able to do so much, so thank you so much, guys. Please do take a quick second to visit their websites. They're in the description below. Now, whether you did or didn't like this review, I kinda wanna know about it. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. I do love the feedback and conversation. And as always, guys, until next time, keep having fun playing Airsoft, 
being good community members, and defend what you love. Later, guys.